you'll leave the harbour and the seaside shops behind and come to a road with a selection of different properties. Well, just at the end of the high street, and I'm here to have a look at this old caretaker's house. Now, it used to belong to the technology school, which is just over there. It's got three bedrooms and a guide price of 110 to 120,000 pounds. It's certainly got a bit of character. It's all boarded up. I think the old caretaker will be turning in his grave to see it looking like this. Let's get inside and see if it's worth the money. Ignore the vandalism because this fabulous staircase is intact with some really ornate mouldings. Off the hallway, there's an old office which shows signs of damp. But the sash windows and the door look salvageable. Unfortunately, elsewhere, the vandal's boots have been busy. Let's hope it's just superficial damage because the rest of the property does seem to have quite a bit of scope. Now, this is the lounge. If you look beyond the state of the place, it's fantastic. You've got double aspect windows. I've got to say the views aren't terribly aspirational, but look at these beautiful French doors leading out to the garden that's now a wilderness, but it could be fantastic. Again, great ceiling height. This is an old lean-to through here, which is currently being used as a kitchen. I would like to relocate this and put it across the other side of the property and have perhaps a kid's playroom or a piano room. But there is such potential with this property. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on this. Outside, the rear of the property looks very forlorn. The brick extension has tiles missing, and although there is a good plot of land at the back, the view's not great, as you overlook a van hire company. But I wonder if you could extend out to the side. There's quite a good space there. The more I look around this property, the more I absolutely love it. Take a look at this. Look, an Edwardian newel post. It's gorgeous. We've got period detailing like this on the doorways, stunning architrave, and these fantastic sash windows. There are quite a few windows in this property, and I do think it's going to cost a fair bit to restore them. So we've got bedroom one through there, bedroom two here, fabulous ceiling height. Can't wait to rip all the boards off and let the light come flooding through this house. Now, it says in the catalogue that you could create a fourth bedroom up here because currently there's only three. Now, if you put a wall up here and you relocate the toilet, put it in the bathroom, you could use this whole area here as bedroom four. It would definitely be cost effective and a fairly cheap job as well. Well, potentially a wonderful house, but there's no escaping the facts. It's not in good condition or in a great location, sandwiched between the van hire company and a parking area. Definitely a tough one to sell. How will a local estate agent convince someone to bid for this at auction? It's got an awful lot of potential. Obviously, everything in the property needs completely renovating, but you've certainly got a lot of scope with the property, whether it be a family home or looking to convert into flats. The guide price is £110,000, now that's relatively low. It is fabulous once you're inside. Yeah, definitely. Even for the area itself, £110,000, it will go in excess of the asking price. Certainly a lot, lot higher. So what is it that you like about this house? I like the period features. It's got a lot of character. It's got a nice feel of space to the property. And the location is very good for, again, the rail links and also the town centre itself. You say it's a good location, but it's kind of like sitting almost in a car park, isn't it? It is. I think that's going to detract in some ways on the resale value. Um, some people aren't going to be too keen on looking over the parking lot, so to speak, behind. But having said that, I think if you have got someone in from out of the location with the rail link, it's certainly going to catch their eye. If this property was in another location, I'm sure they'd be jumping for it at auction. It's a great house, just desperately in need of restoration but I suspect the low guide price of 110 to 120,000 reflects its condition. Would a property like this rent well in this area? I would say rental-wise, the market's probably not quite as good for this sort of property. You tend to find locally the more two-bed terraced houses rent a lot easier, so really for redevelopment. And how much do you think somebody's going to need to throw at this to really bring it up to standard? I would have thought anywhere between 20 and 30,000 to spend on this property. I just hope that any prospective investor allows for that in the budget. It's a bit of a tricky one, this, but as they say, always buy the worst house in the street. But don't forget that curb appeal and location are still very important. Well, as a potential property hotspot, 
Ramsgate is definitely one to watch. House prices have risen at 30% over the last three years. And with talk of the new high-speed rail link, well, it's exciting times ahead. But this house, if you could just pick it up and move it somewhere else, well, it would be ideal. But I still love it. Let's see what happens when it goes to auction. So that was one, four, three, eight. Thank you very much. The successful purchaser of this old caretaker's house is Richard. This is his first investment property, although he started off searching for a place to live. I was looking originally for a house for myself, mm. but um, when I started going to auctions, I realised there was potential there to perhaps invest. So you have bought this purely for investment purposes? Originally, yes, but I'm having a change of mind now of seeing what I've bought, so I might so, live here. So you're quite excited by what you've seen yes, today? Yes, I am. I think it's even better than I thought it would be. It mm. looks big from outside, it is big. It's bigger inside than I imagine, and although the room layout's a little bit unusual, upstairs it's got three good-sized bedrooms, nice-sized bathroom, and a separate toilet with a big landing area. And hasn't it got some fabulous features? I, I love this house. There's something about it that's really exciting me. Yeah, I particularly like the curved walls, where the, the walls go around the skirt walls, as well as the curve of the wall, and the big sash windows mm. and the large French doors. Now, course. let's have a chat about these big sash windows. What are you going to do with them? Because I haven't actually counted up, but you've got quite a few in this property. There's at least a dozen, mm. and they're very expensive to replace. So hopefully the boarding would have protected the outside of many of them. Yeah. So just a case of perhaps refurbishing and repainting. But those where the boarding was inside, they've actually rotted, so they need mm. replacing. So it's a lot of, lot of expense coming there, but I'll try and do it economically. The vandalised walls will need fixing, but Richard's considering opening out the space and going for a complete change of layout. If I convert it to four bedrooms, I end up having to put the toilet in the bathroom. Now, that's not going to be very convenient for four bedrooms, so I think I may well leave it as three big bedrooms, mm -hmm. have a separate toilet, have a toilet in the bathroom, and it'll be very practical. But you can always put a toilet downstairs in the property, so you will have two toilets still. Have you thought about that? I have, mm -hmm. but looking at the way the house is configured, it will mean taking some of the room from some of the downstairs rooms. So I think I might stick with three good bedrooms mm -hmm rather than going for the four. And you've got that fantastic landing space upstairs, haven't you? Yes, it's lovely. It'd be nice when the windows open. It's nice and bright up there. It's very grand. Richard has certainly got a great vision for the inside of this house, but I'm more concerned about the surroundings. However, he has a solution to that as well. What I intend to do is hopefully put a wall on the left-hand side so mm. it becomes totally enclosed, and once the garden is cleared of all the brambles and it's lawn, you could be anywhere and you won't know what's either side because you've got two big walls, so it's totally enclosed. What I love about you is you're so positive. You can, you can really see where you're going with this project, can't you? I hope so, yeah. So how much money have you got to spend on this place? Probably between twenty two to 24,000. Um, one sixty at the auction, budget of, say, 22 to 24, bring up to about 20, 185 investment. Mm -hmm. Anything above that will be a bonus, mm. and um, if I break even, I'll be happy. So if you break even, you'll be happy, so that means you won't have made a penny. No, so, I won't. So I'll... why are you doing it? Because I could live in it. And if I live in it, I'll have a nice house that I've renovated for myself at a good price. Richard could turn out to be just another caretaker of this house. Is his plan to do it up and sell on? I may well live in it myself, um, although the original intention was to sell on, but it depends what it's like and how the market goes. If it's worth a lot more, it may be worth taking the money and going and move on to my next project. But do you know what, Richard? I think you've fallen in love with this place. First rule of property developing, don't fall in love with your stock. And you've done that, you've fallen in love with this place, I bet you end up living here. I like it, I don't love it. Join me later in the programme to see if Richard does become the next short-stay caretaker or whether he decides to make this his permanent home. Back in Ramsgate, Kent, this derelict detached property didn't overlook the sea, just a van rental business. But that didn't put off first-time developer Richard as he paid 160000 for what was once home to the caretaker of the technical college. 
Well, it's nearly seven months later and we've come back to check on progress. But first, take a look at the back. The no man's land has gone. It's been cleared and grass has been laid. In no man's land together. Inside, the vandal's damage has disappeared and the rooms have been stripped right back. Upstairs, the bathroom and the bedroom are works in progress and the house is well on its way to being a great home again. There is clearly plenty still to do, but where did Richard start? Since we were last here, the garden has been cleared. It was almost like a jungle. Um, it's now a lawn. The damp issue has been solved. We've dug all the way down, exposing the damp course, all the way around the house where it's needed to be done. Um, we clear the cavities in the walls so the damp can't get through there. There's an awful lot of junk in the house. People have broken in and left all the debris that they leave behind. That all had to be cleared. We're on our seventh skip now. Repairing the damaged walls produced even more rubbish. When we came here, there was a large hole in the wall, so we stripped it right back. It's quite tedious because there were hundreds of nails to take out, plus all the extra, extra plaster. But it's going to be put back the way it should be, and it will look nice when it's done. Upstairs, the walls and the ceilings will need replastering, but Richard was delighted that the rain hadn't got into the loft. Fortunately, the main roof didn't have any leakages in it. There were one or two tiles, but nothing major. One of the main things we had to sort out was the extension of the back. The tiles were missing, so we had to make it weather tight. Richard knocked the wall down at the end of the extension through to the old outside toilet, and he plans to convert the extra space into a fourth bedroom. That should certainly add to the value of the house. Richard's been careful to keep as many of the original features as possible. I do like the size of the rooms, actually 10 feet high. Nice flooring in there, the original wooden floorboards, big heavy sash windows. I've had them stripped down now and they're back, going to be back to the original pine, so I'm going to varnish them. Richard teamed up with a friend to buy the house as an investment. To maximise their return, he's doing as much of the work as he can himself. I put up quite a few hours in, an awful lot actually. I dropped my daughter at school, then drive down here, and normally about 10 or 11 hours a day I put in, four days a week, if I can. So, um, yeah, it needs to be done and someone's got to do it. Well, with those long hours, I hope that the budget's on track. The budget was 22 to 24,000, but I don't think we'll be spending that on what we thought we would be spending, but we go, we've, other things have cropped up, i.e. repairing the damp that's in, in there, paying for all the skips. But we should be coming in on budget, or we'll just... We'll, I think everything should be OK. Richard paid 160000 for this old caretaker's house. If he can keep his budget to about 24000 that will make a total expenditure of 184 grand. You have to admire him. On his first development project, wherever he can, he's rolled up his sleeves and got stuck in. If we'd paid people to do the work, it would cost a lot more and I think we may well have exceeded the budget. Some things you can't, like central heating, plumbing, things like this, where you need certification, expert help. But generally, most things you can do yourselves, because if they can do it, we can. When I walked in, the first impression was, wow, Great hallway, lots of accommodation, um, loads of potential. Second time back in the property, I must admit, very impressed with what I've seen. Um, obviously, a lot of work has been done to the property. Still quite a bit of work to be done, though. I like the fact it's detached. Um, it, it is a potentially a great location, and it's got a, a good-sized garden as well, which is rare for Ramsgate. It's old houses, the rooms, I mean, they are proper family homes, you know, high ceilings. Um, when it's renovated, it's going to have a fantastic feel about it. I think one of the issues with the property, obviously, it does have certain commercial sort of neighbouring properties. It can be a little bit busy at times. Some people might have an issue with that. Others may not give it a second thought. Richard paid £160,000. The plan is hopefully to sell the property and take a profit. So how much do our experts think it could be worth? I would say as a finished article, once everything's done in the property, you're going to be looking in the region of 230 to 240. I've got a feeling that someone's going to probably pay between probably 225 to 240 for the property. That's quite reasonable. I would have expected more. And I'm sure that when it's all done, it will achieve more. 
But even if it achieves those figures, I'll still be happy because there's nice profit in there. And profit could be the saving grace of this house. Yes, it's got some great features, but sadly for Richard, its location is always going to let it